Hello students, this is Dr. H. Sophia, Professor of English. At this semester, I will be handling the course END 2213 South Asian Literature. So, just to give you an overview of the syllabus, this is a four credit course with five modules. The first module you have the introduction to South Asian Literature. The second module is a few poems written by the South Asian literary figures. The third module is on the drama of the South Asian literature and the fourth and fifth modules deals with the fiction written by some of the writers of South Asia. Now look at this map. So this is the map of South Asia. You can see very clearly the countries which can be called as a South Asian countries. Just look at the map very carefully. So what are the South Asian countries that you have seen on the map? It's Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. In the syllabus, you will also read some of the works of Malaysian, Chinese and uh, Korean as well as uh, Japanese writers. Now, Malaysia is a southeast country while Korea, Japan and China are in northeast Asia. The region was known more as the Indian subcontinent in the colonial context or southern, southern Asia. Now, how did this term South Asia develop? It developed in the West, especially in the USA, where the Americans wanted to study the Indic thought and culture. So, what do you mean by Indic? Indic is of India. That is studies relating to the Indian culture and thought. I wish to also inform you here that there is also a center of Indic studies. And this has been established especially to promote studies and research on various aspects of Indian civilization. Then the term South Asia was again formalized with the creation of South Asian Association of Regional Corporation, which is known as the SARC. Now, the term SARC, it means, as you can see, the full expansion of the abbreviation, it is South Asian Association of Regional Cooperation. And this was established in the year 1985 to promote the welfare of the people of South Asia. Now, as for the geography of South Asia, you have already seen the map. That was the first slide. So, South Asia is one of the most populous regions in the world. With its population of 1.88 billion, constituting nearly one-fourth of the world's total population. As on 2024, it is estimated that the population of the world is 8.1 billion. So, you can see here very clearly the population of South Asia. So, it is 1.88 billion uh, and constitutes one-fourth of the world's total population. Now, this population is dispersed in terms of its ethnic, linguistic and religious features across the entire subcontinent. Now, what do you mean by ethnic? So, ethnic means a group of people with a common identity based on shared cultural features such as language, religion, customs, traditions, ancestry and history. The most common basis of ethnicity is language. Now, as Indians, we all know that the Indian constitution recognizes 15 regional languages. And what are these languages? To mention a few like Assamese, Bengali, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Tamil, etc. So, you can also see that as far as religion is concerned, the religious features in India is concerned. So, 80% of the population is Hindu. So, Hindus form 80% of the population of India and 14% are Muslims and afterwards the other 
religions which include Christians, uh, Sikhs and the Buddhists. So the Himalayan belt, the Deccan plateau with the Indo-Gangetic and desert plain intersect the political boundaries between the states of South Asia, thereby making them the part of the same geological template. Now these are the island states. Which are the island states? Sri Lanka, Maldives, Afghanistan, Nepal and Bhutan. So they are known as the island states and they have their own geographical features. Now coming to the history of uh, South Asian literature, we can see that there are uh, two pictures of the Indus Valley Civilization in this slide because South Asia is the home to the Indus Valley Civilization which is considered to be one of the oldest civilizations in the world. And this was also known as the Bronze Age Civilization in the northwestern regions of South Asia. Then the region also saw the influence of Aryan Vedic tribe Emergence of Buddhism, impact of the Islamic rule followed by the British colonialism. Now let me tell you what is Aryan Vedic period. Now this Indus Valley civilization declined by 1400 BC. The next major civilization that occurred in ancient India was the Vedic age between 1500 BC and 600 BC. It is said that the Vedas were composed during this period in Sanskrit between 1500 and 800 BCE and the Vedas were first transmitted orally and you will also be knowing the names of the four Vedas which you have or you must have studied in history and the names of these four Vedas are the Rig Veda, the Sama Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda. Now the next is the emergence of Buddhism. Now who are known as the Buddhists? The Buddhists are the believers of Gautama Buddha who was born in the 6th century in Nepal. You can see that Buddhism is a dominant religion in Southeast Asian and East Asian countries. Next is the Islamic rule. Now, these Muslim empires dominated the South Asian subcontinent. From the late 12th century onwards, and religion was the basis for the 1947 partition into India and Pakistan. So, India and Pakistan have fought several wars to control the Muslim dominated Kashmir region. This problem is still ongoing and additionally you know decades of long political conflicts in Afghanistan are centered around the imposition of strict Islamic ideologies by the Taliban's. So you can see here the impact of the Islamic rule in South Asia. The first one was the Muslim empires which dominated the South Asian subcontinent from the late 12th century onwards for which religion was the basis for the partition of India and Pakistan in 1947 and also the conflict which is ongoing in India is the Kashmir issue and the issue of the Taliban occupation in Afghanistan where the Afghans have imposed a very strict Islamic ideology on the Afghans. Apart from this, various Muslims kingdoms ruled most of South Asia from the mid 14th to the late 18th century. See including the Bamini, Bengal, Gujarat, Malwa and Mysore. See, this is just recollecting whatever you have studied or read in history. And it is also noteworthy to mention that Islam is the second largest religion in South Asia with more than 640 million Muslims 
living there. Islam developed in South Asian countries in the 7th and 8th centuries by the way of trade through silk roads. Muslim traders came to trade rare spices in China, Indonesia, Philippines and major parts of Eastern Asian regions. And then afterwards, you know about the British colonialism, how the Britishers ruled India and the atrocities committed on the Indians by the Britishers in the form of colonialism. Now just to tell you about the Indus Valley civilization itself, as you can see in the pictures, this civilization was known for its urban planning even in those days. They had a very meticulous planning of their towns and cities and they had you know perfect drainage system and brick houses, metallurgy and also they were good and they were known for making handicrafts. Say they did not have you know engineers nor did they have education in those times. But you can see that the people of the Indus Valley civilization were brilliant. So without proper civil engineering a system you know they planned for their city. They had a good drainage system they built you know modern brick houses in those time and also they were very good in making all kinds of handicrafts. And you also must have heard of these two uh, cities of uh, Indus Valley civilization that is Harappa and Mohanjadaro. The people of the Indus Valley uh, civilization, you know, they were very good in agriculture. They cultivated lands in new cities and they were very prosperous. And after the Indus Valley civilization declined because of the emergence of the shamanic movement, which were non-Vedic movements like Buddhism and Jainism. Now, who were the Shramanas? The Shramanas were those who practiced an ascetic or strict self-denying lifestyle in pursuit of spiritual liberation. They are commonly known as monks, like for example, Gautama Buddha. The Shramana movement gave rise to Jainism and Buddhism. And these followers, that is the followers of Shramana, they renounced marriage. They did not marry and they did not believe in domestic life either. And they were more devoted to spiritual part. That is why they were known as the Shramanas. So after the decline of the Indus Valley civilization, you can see that this Shamanic movement had emerged. And so, the movements like I know, uh, Buddhism and Jainism also spread very fast to countries like Ceylon and Southeast Asia and China. So, I have already told you about the arrival of Islam in the subcontinent initially to the invading armies of Arabs. So, they came as traders to the Silk Road to sell some rare spices. The Turks and Mongols and later its political consolidation under the Mughal rule created a political religious order superimposed on the subcontinent plain which gave the South Asia its contemporary multicultural identity. And coming here to the last slide, I think this must be this last slide, the British colonial rule lasting for more than 200 years created the basis of administrative and legal entity, legal sorry, legal identity of modern South Asia. So the Britishers were ruling India for more than 200 years. You can see that India was under colonialism for nearly 200 years and the problems the Indians must have faced during this period of colonialism. The next is the emergence of the nationalist movement. Now, what is nationalist movement? 
So nationalist movement in India from 1957 to 1947. That is, this is the period when we were colonized by the British. To mention a few, like the Satyagraha, Swadeshi movement, Civil Disobedience movement, and the Quit India movement. So these were known as the nationalist movement. I have just mentioned a few here. I will repeat again. The national movements in India from 19, sorry, 1857 to 1947 like the Satyagraha, Swadeshi, Civil Disobedience and the Quit India movement. So the emergence of these movements and the subsequent partition of the subcontinent, sub uh, subsequent partition that is the division of India and Pakistan into two different nations based on communal lines, communal lines So most of the Muslims they went to Pakistan. So an Islamic country or an Islamic country was formed, created a post-colonial fissure that continues to plague the region till date. So post-colonial that is after colonialism. So the after effects of colonialism. So all this still continues to be a part of the old culture in both the regions in India as well as Pakistan. And coming to the South Asian politics in the post-colonial period, we will see that there was lot of unrest between India and Pakistan, which you call it as an India-Pakistan strife. So they fight over the Kashmir issue. At present, relationship between the two countries are not good. And then uh, Bangladesh, the Bangladesh liberation struggle against Pakistan in 1971. And then the Sinhala Tamil strife, that is the Sinhalese, that is the Sri Lankans, they attacked thousands of Tamils, of Tamil people in Sinhalese majority area, that is the Tamils who had occupied the Sinhalese area that is known as the Sinhala Tamil strife in Sri Lanka and then the insurgency in the northeast that means the multiple separatist militant groups operating in some parts of northeastern states like Assam Manipur, Nagaland, Meghalaya, Tripura and Arunachal Pradesh. That is called as the insurgency in the North East. That refers to the separate militant groups which are functioning today in the North East, North Eastern states of India like Assam, Manipur, Nagaland, Meghalaya, Tripura and Arunachal Pradesh. So all these in some way or the other have an outcome of the kind of politics that got played out during the colonial period and its legacy, which the post-colonial states in South Asia could not effectively address. So this is a short history I have given you of the South Asian literature. So I have discussed in this lesson, what are the seven, sorry, the eight South Asian countries and its geographical location, what is SARC, then the geography of uh, South Asia where the South Asians constitute nearly one fourth of the world's total population today and then we also saw the history of South Asian literature with special reference to the Indus Valley civilization which is considered to be one of the oldest civilizations in the world. We also saw about the influence of the Aryan Vedic period, the growth of Buddhism, then the Islam rule and the British colonialism. And then we also discussed about the Shramanic movement, you know, which was known as the non-Vedic movement from where the religions of Jainism and Buddhism emerged and also we saw the spread of Buddhism 
to countries like Ceylon and South Asia, Southeast Asia and China. And we also saw how the arrival of the Islamic religion and also the Mongols. So the Mongols, I think I forgot to mention you about that. So Mongols are the East Asian ethnic groups native to Mongolia. The Mongol Empire was founded by Genghis Khan in 1206. So the influence of all these cultures, Indus Valley Civilization and then the Aryo Vedic and then Shramana and then the Muslim culture and then the uh, Hindu culture, Buddhist culture and then you know Jainism. All right. So all these has a very important role to play in the politico religious order on the subcontinent and because of which South Asia is considered to have a multicultural identity. And we also saw about the British colonialism in India for more than 200 years and the effect it had on the Indians. We also discussed about post-colonialism that is the after effects of colonialism in the South Asian countries and also about a glimpse of the South Asian politics especially in India and Pakistan in Bangladesh and then in Sri Lanka and then in Northeast Asian states of India which definitely has an impact of the colonial period and still you can find its effects. So this is the reference from which I prepared my slides for the class and if you want to know more about South Asian literature so there is a beautiful video uh, in this website. Maybe you can, when you are free, you can just uh, uh, click on the mouse and learn more about the rich heritage of South Asian literature. Thank you very much students. I hope I was able to give you some information or introduction to South Asian literature for you to understand the concepts of uh, the other modules which are which you will read or which you will study soon. Thank you very much.